Brady's just been to India on holiday and he's shown me some terrific pictures and video of the Taj Mahal. I've never been there. Immediately when he showed me it, I could see that the building is being cleaned. And when you think about cleaning, you think about chemistry. The Taj Mahal is famous because it's white. And it's white because it's made of white marble. For years and years, there has been a problem that the white marble gets dirty and it keeps on getting dirty and they keep on having to clean it. Why is the Taj Mahal dirty? How do you know what the dirt is? How do you get rid of it? I looked round and I couldn't find any completely white marble, but I found this lump of marble here, which is a reasonable piece of carved marble, rather like the things that you might find in the Taj Mahal, though of course of different style. And what's more, it's dirty. Being it was in our house, that's why I found it, and it's been lying in the fireplace in our house, so it's got quite a lot of dirt and dust on it. The first thing about dirty marble, which I can show you, is that some dust you could rub off quite easily with a brush. Although it's quite tedious, you can brush even the Taj Mahal. So there's some dirt, like the dirt here, which brushing doesn't remove. So the question is, how do you find out what it is? I found a really quite interesting scientific paper that was published two years ago where they actually solved this problem of finding out what the dirt was. The problem is that the Taj Mahal is a huge building. You can't very easily climb up with microscopes or spectrometers high on the walls. But these authors had a really clever idea. They took small pieces of marble, essentially the same material that the Taj Mahal is made of, and glued it to the walls in various places, and then left it a few months and took it back to the lab and looked at the surface. And what they found was that even after a short time, the surface became slightly coloured and it was due to particles, very small particles, not more than three microns in diameter, that's three millionths of a metre, and they were essentially particles of carbon. Now you know we always like to do experiments on periodic videos, and for once I can do an experiment, or try to do one, in my office. I'm not going to do it on my precious piece of marble, but here we've got a piece of limestone which is very similar to marble, and chemically it's calcium carbonate. So what I'm going to do is to light a candle. If some of you watched our Halloween candle video, you will know that out of the top of candle flame you get sooty particles. And I'm going to just try passing it underneath. Now the first thing to say that what I've done is equivalent to centuries of the Taj Mahal being exposed to the atmosphere but you know we like to accelerate things for you. So what we now have is a mixture of carbon particles and some waxy oily solids. Now if you go back to Brady's amazing pictures the clean parts are strikingly white and some parts are slightly yellow. Brady described it as rather like old paper but this is, is black because I cheated and used a really powerful source of carbon on a small area. In the case of the Taj Mahal, and in particular the atmosphere of Agra, there are particles of carbon in the air, but their density is quite low, and they land every so often on the surface, and gradually, as the layer builds up, it will tend to change colour. It will begin very pale yellow, and then probably get darker and darker as the layers build up. Now, I'm not going to discuss in great detail the origins of the air pollution, but at least some of it comes from vehicle exhausts, the gases coming out or unburnt particles coming out of the back of cars and lorries. So now the authorities at the Taj Mahal have banned vehicles with internal combustion engines from quite a large radius round. and Brady and the others, tourists, have to make little journeys in sort of electric golf buggies or the equivalent 
to do the final half mile or so to get there to try and keep the air a bit cleaner around it. Of course, there are other emissions from industrial plants nearby, and there are also emissions from people burning fuel such as cow dung. So it's a big mixture of sources, but the real problem is how do you get it off the stone. What you have is a fairly thin surface covering of this dirt, which you could in principle scrape off, but that would damage the surface of the marble, so next time it will get harder to remove, and every time it'll get harder and harder. Somehow you've got to use chemicals. The problem is that marble is calcium carbonate, which is very sensitive to acid. Even the acid that comes from industrial emissions are enough to damage the surface. So you've got to use something that chemically is very neutral or even slightly alkaline. So in fact, the authorities at Taj Mahal have used a method, which is in fact, I think, quite a traditional method, which is based on the way that people in the old days used to treat wool. Now, fortunately, I don't need to produce a sample of sheep's wool because you can see quite a good simulation here. But in the old days, the people who cleaned up wool were called fullers, and they used a mineral called fuller's earth, which on one hand removed particles of dirt and stuff sticking to the surface of the sheep's wool. It also removed the last vestiges of oil and grease from the wool, and also made the wool rather denser. This is a sort of clay which goes into very fine particles, and those particles are very good at absorbing carbonaceous dirt and oil. If you mix it with water, it forms a paste, like mud. So you can put it on the surface of the stone like a mud pack. And after a day or two, it dries and cracks as it dries, so it becomes very flaky, and you can just brush it off. You can remove the carbon particles from the surface very gently. Clay are quite complicated mixtures of very fine particles and minerals that are based on aluminium and alkaline metals like sodium, potassium and calcium. The key point is that they are ionic compounds. The aluminium has often ha will have hydroxyl groups, OH groups on the surface, particularly if you made it into slurry with water. But because the particles are so small, each gram of material will have a very high surface area. And therefore, it means there is a big surface to attract the carbon particles off the marble. And you don't need an enormous difference in the attraction between the surface of the marble and the uh, fuller's earth, because you're leaving the mud pack on for a period of some days, and that slight difference is enough to remove most of the particles. And again, you don't have to remove them all, but the more you remove, the cleaner the marble will look. I think it's really nice that you can use the same material to clean sheep fleeces, to clean the Taj Mahal, but the important thing is that these materials were identified over a period of centuries, if not thousands of years. So they are probably some of the best natural materials you can get because people have tried so many and found that this is the best. I'm in India, in Mumbai, what used to be called Bombay. And behind me is the famous Taj Mahal Hotel. And when I'm in India, of course, I begin to think about Indian chemistry, Indian science. I'm on Bondi Beach in Sydney, Australia. And I want to talk to you about ozone because there's an interesting paper that's just been published.